Hello everybody, my name is Isaiah Rivera. I have a 50.5 inch vertical. This is Austin Burke, and he has a something really high vertical. It's somewhere. Somewhere where? We don't know, somewhere in the ether. We'll find out one day, I'll test it soon. It's high 40s, high somewhere 40s. in the high 40s. Yeah. Uh, and today we are going to be asking the question, does upper body training make you jumping more higher? Yep. All right, so before we get into it though, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsors yeah, over at thpstrength.com. Austin, can you take it away? Do you want to jump higher? Wait, I don't know the full ad. <laughs> I'm getting fired. <laughs> um, could, you, could you do the sponsor or you want to do it? I could do it. Okay, I, I only know one part. If you want to jump higher, go to thpstrength.com. That was it? Yeah. I thought it was like Premiere. Wait, do you hear that? Is that, a, is, is, is that a discount in the distance? It is. Oh, wow. It's coming closer. Wow. You, you know what we should do? What? We should give them a discount. What does it say? It's um, 10% off using the code thpstrength.com. The code THP. What did I say? You said oh, it's just THP. The code is THP for 10% off your first month. So if you are weary and you want to move out of your mom's house because she's been yelling at you and you're tired of mom yelling, <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to sign up. THP, THPstrength.com, code THP for 10% off. I'm a little... Out of you're place. a little rusty. I'm a little rusty. We haven't seen, we haven't seen Austin in the podcast in a while. Uh, but let's get into it. So, as you can see here, we drew a nice self-portrait of me yep. looking inside the rim. Yep. And the muscles are to scale, obviously. <laughs> uh, I guess let's, let's start by giving our personal experiences with mm -hmm. upper body training. Uh, I think you, you can take it yep. off. Yeah. So, when I initially started training with John, I was forbidden. Forbid? Forbidden? Forbidden to do any type of upper body training um, just because I would overdo it. Um, but as I got older and we started working with Christian, both of us, both of our verticals did go up. Who's Christian? Christian Williams, archery strong. I apologize. Look him up. Great guy. Um, I, we both noticed our verticals go up. And I think a lot of times people's verticals will go down when they start bulking and doing traditional bodybuilding, dietary plans and stuff. Um, but yeah, my vert went up when I started having a more balanced upper body program. And, and what type of training, like, like start from when you were like 16. <laughs> What, uh, what were all the different types of upper body training and, and what do you currently do at the moment? Okay. So I used to train upper body like five days a week. I know I look skinny, blame John. Um, but I used to do like the Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilder.com program, the Sylvester Stallone three lifts a day type of thing, eating nothing but oatmeal cookies and a couple cups of coffee. Um, I did all that stuff and my vertical <laughs> was pretty low. <laughs> Um, how about you? What is, or now, I mean, now it's twice a week, more functional training. Uh, you know, you got pole movements, push movements, core, carries, um, presses, things of that nature. Nothing too, too specific like bicep curls or tricep extensions or anything like that. Just more functional work. How about you? Uh, for me, <clears throat> I started training just in general, just strength training when I was about 14, 15 years old. I would always just look up programs and different styles of training on the internet. The main reason I was doing so was for basketball. You know, I found out early on that it's important to have a strong, strong upper body for sports. And it wasn't just basketball, I was playing baseball too. I played American football and you gotta be really strong for those sports. So I started doing uh, very early on, I forgot who was the guy who originated this, but there was something called Grease the Groove. And it's basically you do a ton of pull-ups, a ton of push-ups every single day and it was called greasing the groove because you grease that like motor pattern so what he would do is have you set up a pull-up bar on a doorway and every single time you pass the doorway you do four to five pull-ups the same thing no you don't go to like max effort or failure you just do four or five pull-ups and my pull-ups increased by a ton just from doing that and this is kind of a second hand point that also was why it made sense later on when I found out about jumping every day. Mm -hmm. It like made sense logically for me because yeah. I grew up with that, uh, I guess that base of knowledge. But yeah, Google Grease the Groove if you wanna learn more about that. It's actually pretty interesting stuff. Um, so I started with that, then I got access to weights um, and I started doing a program called Starting Strength and I would just do like heavy rows and bench press basically. Mm -hmm. I kept doing that all the way up until I was about 17, 18, then I stopped because I started hearing that upper body isn't good for, for jumping higher. And I basically just stopped completely from doing upper body. There would be uh, times where I would get hurt sometimes because of having debilitating knee pain where I would focus more on upper body just so I could 
keep my sanity and continue training. But for the most part, stopped doing it. Then I started doing THP style training, and I started doing a lot of the circuit type training, bodybuilding circuits, and that type of thing. Um, I didn't gain a lot of mass. I also wasn't in a caloric surplus. I was really skinny at the time, but it did get me a lot fitter. Um, and I noticed it have some transfer also to technique. I started getting like faster hand speed and stuff like that. Um, then I started get. I did that for probably around two years. Then around 2021, I got really bad shoulder issues uh, from low rimming every single day, practicing 360 behind the back. And that's when I got in contact with Christian Williams, who is uh, John's uh, best friend from college. And he trains archers. And archers, they have uh, the most common type of injury is our shoulder injuries. And it's similar to how jumping athletes have a lot of knee pain when they jump. That's the same thing for archery and shoulders. So he referred me to him. He started giving me shoulder rehab workouts within three, four months. Got to the point where I could do power cleans again and dunk without pain in my shoulders. And then he asked me, he's like, do you want to just keep going from here? And I was like, sure, let's do it. Now, this is late 2021. If you, don't, if you haven't seen my past videos, I tested 50.5 inches in 2022. Up until this point, super, super, super skinny, uh, just from a lack of upper body training. Mm -hmm. And... That year, starting late 20 or mid 2021, up until I tested 50.5, I started going really hard with upper body training. There was one period of time after I tested 50.5 because my vertical went up after, and I got significantly bigger. If you compare me 2021 to end of 2022, I gained like 10 pounds, and it felt like most of that was in my in my upper body. Um, the type of training I was doing, however, very little focus on chest, very, very little focus. I told Christian, hey, most specific muscle groups I use are gonna be my shoulders, upper back, uh, lats, and that's basically it. And I gained a lot of mass there, right? As you can see, like, look, my shoulders little, and- Little chest. And no chest. Um, but those were the main muscle groups and I continued jumping higher. Then during 2023, I actually started getting a little too obsessed with upper body. And I started benching a ton. And I gained a lot of size in like one or two months, and I noticed a decrease in my vertical. I started jumping poorly. My hand speed didn't feel as good. I felt tighter. Uh, just didn't feel good. So then I stopped benching and really focusing super hard on bench press. Um, I still train chest a little bit, but not at the same volume that I was doing it before. And right now, upper body is still not my main focus. My workouts are two days a week. And I think one of them is 20 minutes and the other one's maybe 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. And that's it. And it allows me to maintain a little bit of strength, maybe increase strength a tiny bit. Um, but, yeah, that's my... I feel like your history was way better than mine. I was like, yeah, I, and, uh, at 16 I did some, like, Arnold stuff. Um, <laughs> I guess what I would, like, go back to is probably 2020. I didn't... Well, I did a bunch of upper body, like, 2018, 2019. And then 2020 hit and I was just dunking. Do you remember that? I was like, yeah. really, really skinny... Uh, probably 150. Um, and then after COVID hit, I went through a really bad breakup. So I had like terrible body dysmorphia and I just got huge. Like I was like 180 something, which, you know, at 5'9", if you saw any videos of me, I was just like walking around. I worked out five days a week on top of our leg days, and our jump training. Um, I also remember your workouts during... I think 2018, 2019, when uh, it was like when you were doing demolition and working oh, the yeah. night shift and stuff. I remember you would have crazy, like your workouts would be like two hours, like yeah. your upper body, your upper body yeah, days, which is crazy volume. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I mean, my vertical definitely suffered one foot, um, two foot. I don't know, but it wasn't consistent. It was just, you know, I just felt like a fat blob throwing myself around. Um, and then in 2022, I saw Isaiah's progress with, with Christian. And I started working with him. And then my, I gained more muscle mass. I lost weight and started jumping higher. So, and we do yeah. have the, pretty much the same setup, just little variations in the workouts. Yeah. So now to answer the question, does it help your jumping? You just, we just gave you our personal experiences. Uh, now let's logically uh, look through this. So training effects. Training effects are very specific. So if you want to cause a certain adaptation, um, you have to hit the muscle groups that you're going to be using in the set activity. So if you want to jump higher, you have to look at what muscle groups are you actually being used. Of course, you use your legs. Those are the most important 
pieces. Uh, <laughs> that's the most important thing when it comes to jumping higher is training the legs. But jumping is a full body movement, right? Especially if you have good technique off an approach, you're seeing big arm swings, right? And the arms are aggressively going up in the air. Yeah. And then there's also secondary benefits or secondary upper body specificity when it comes to doing dunk uh, mm -hmm. tricks, right? It takes a lot of upper body... Uh, your muscles are very active during those movements, during jumping and while doing hand speed and technique work. I do think another good example of this, if you watch any Isaiah dunks in slow motion when he's shirtless, especially when he's going off the dribble, you can see his traps contract, his upper back. You can kind of see every single muscle you use yeah, when yeah. he's jumping, like for mm -hmm. example. So if we break it down, right, when you jump in your arm swing, when you're putting your arms like this, you're shrugging up. So that's your traps. If you look at any dunker, shirtless they're usually really skinny skinny and then really big traps because that's all we're doing it's this movement right here off the dribble same thing you take your penultimate and your shoulders literally come up like this then down aggressively and then on the upswing it's traps again right mm -hmm. your shoulders are it's this movement right here over and over again so traps very 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 important shoulders you're going into shoulder extension here and then shoulder flexion here very aggressive movement at the shoulders shoulders very important um, your upper back and your lats, this movement right here, right? And then uh, the chest actually has secondary importance as well because it helps with this movement. So if upper, you literally touch, chest, yeah, chest. like if you feel your chest, you can feel it activate when you do, a, when you do an arm swing. And then even more when, you do a, when you're doing tricks, right? Like at East Bay, your arm is going right here towards the center. That's going to be using your chest. Uh, and lots and lots of upper back Main ones, your traps, your shoulders, your upper back. That's, that's two foot. So one foot, I guess, it's going to be a lot less. One foot yeah. is a lot less. Um, the other thing, the reason upper body doesn't help as much for, uh, for one foot jumps is your mass plays a way bigger role. Anytime way bigger role. I gain role. weight, I lose, I lose my one foot. Like I'm 165 right now, and I'm st I still feel like I'm sluggish. I need to get down to like 160. Especially yeah. with my, my muscle mass. Yeah, and, and the reason being uh, is because the ground contact times are so much shorter. And the heavier you are, the, the higher those ground contact times are, are going to be. Um, yeah, you're going to so, leak, leak well, energy and uh, not be able to apply, uh, not have as much impulse in your approach so and your a, plant. As a one-foot specific jumper, would you say like just shoulders? Yeah. Like, for, like you know, <laughs> for the arm swing? Yeah, I mean, I would say... <clears throat> you you can still it's really it's important to train your upper body, mm -hmm. uh, but you just have to be careful about gaining size is the, is the biggest thing. Like a lot of a lot of athletes will ask me how do I get so strong but stay so lean, and it's just how I eat right. He eats like a bird. Yeah, you have to you have to understand what your your maintenance calories are, and then if you're overweight right you have to be in a caloric deficit, um, and vice versa if you want to gain weight. So with a one, as a one-foot jumper, still important to train the upper body. You yeah. just have to watch your weight. A two-foot jumper, like anecdotally, and then from, also from what I've seen from, you know, the hundreds of athletes, thousands of athletes I've trained at this point, uh, the heavier I've gotten, the higher I've jumped. For the most part, the, the exception was that one period of time where I focused excessively on upper body, uh, and I gained a ton of upper body mass. Uh, but, yeah, and then as far as, like, I guess what lifts are, yeah, are the I most guess, useful? I mean, it, it's going to depend on what level they're at, too. Um, I mean, we could, yeah. We yeah. Could that. Uh, some of my favorite lifts that we could go more in-depth, but you can sign up for our coaching if you want us to program upper body I've, specifically. I've also, I'm in the process of constructing, like I've done a thousand million jillion upper body programs, and I found stuff that works for me, kind of like combining, you know, the gymnastic work I did growing up. So we do, uh, we are going to have a calisthenic program, and if you've seen my abs in the past, not right now, I'm setting up my old core workout and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Made them funny names. So it'll be like Austin as seen on TV abs or the body weight one will be, what is it? Austin special gymnastic body weight man or body weight <laughs> gymnastic man and, and so forth. So we're going to have a bunch of different specific upper body plans um, for you guys, depending on yeah. what type of jumper and what you guys need. But as far as like my favorite lifts for upper body, weighted pull-ups and weighted chin-ups, 
I've seen a direct correlation in one, them helping my cleans and some of my lower body lifts, and then my jumping. Uh, it's helped a ton, especially if you can get really strong relative to your body weight. Relative strength is how much weight you can lift divided by how much you weigh. Absolute strength is just the total amount of weight regardless of your body weight. What you want to do with upper body lifts is your relative strength. You want to increase that by a ton. And same with lower body. Uh, but yeah, weighted chin-ups, weighted pull-ups, immensely helpful for me. Mm -hmm. um, shoulder pressing, especially with dumbbells, I have found to be really, really useful. Um, I try to stay away from barbell benching, but dumbbell benching has been useful in keeping my shoulders healthy, maintaining some of that uh, ch chest, right, strength. Chesticles. Yeah, my chesticles. Um, and then those are, those are the main lifts. I do a lot of carries as well. Carries have been absolutely clutch. They also help you stay in shape. And I'm also going to touch on this point. Uh, doing upper body training also helps keep you fit, mm -hmm. and it gets your body fat percentage lower, right? Your body composition uh, becomes a lot better. So that's another secondary. I would actually call that a primary benefit. Um, is you can get leaner by doing all this upper but body training. You don't training. have to do it five days a week with jump training. Yeah. You only have to do it like twice a week. It'll yeah. Be good. As long as you're being mindful of your calories mm -hmm. and you're training hard in the, with the lower body and doing regular jump sessions, you, need to, you don't need to go crazy with the upper upper body work. Um, but I think that's a pretty good rundown. Yeah. My favorite uh, lifts, weighted dips on the rings and weighted pull-ups, rings. I'm a big ring guy. Um, I actually hate shoulders, but I, I know it's beneficial for me. And I'm a big carry dude, too. Me and Isaiah will just do carries in the street shirtless like cavemen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. So does upper body training make you jumping more higher? Yes, it can help. <laughs> if you want to skip to the end of the video, you yeah. get the answer. <laughs> Um, if you found this helpful at all, please like the video. And if you're on a podcast platform, give us five stars. Uh, and yeah, share this with somebody. And I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Catch you guys next time. Leave a comment if you got any. Peace out.